So I'm going to be using this 5 cm diameter glove, wooden glove that you can easily find on Amazon as a wooden glove and I am just going to use this sponge as a support. I take a pencil and I am taking a black acrylic painting, a matte painting, it's not shiny. And then uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is just to put some black background in half of the ball. I try to uh, paint as uniform as possible, but maybe I will have to, to give it a couple of hands of painting. So first I paint half of it. and I can keep it on the sponge but it might roll over um, so I'm taking more painting I'm trying to paint half of it and then wait a little till it dries it's important that you keep the bowl really well pressed below in the below part in the part that I'm not painting and it's also important to try to paint the background on the same direction and to keep to cover well there shouldn't be any empty spaces avoid also um, too much painting it has to be just uh, adequate quantity of painting if you have excess just brush them out and then you can clean your brush but see the movement is pretty gentle and now we're gonna let it dry so it can roll over but try to keep it still and if you consider it necessary, yeah, put a pencil like this. So I think now it is food, it's well dry because I am passing over my finger and I don't have any black on my finger. Then I'm going to paint the rest of the ball. Like this. I have to... Um, make sure it's smooth you, you cannot see any difference in the painting from the part that you painted first and the part you're painting second it has to look like i don't know like completely covered with with no no lines it has to be smooth the background has to be smooth And super important, don't forget to clean your pen, your brush after you are done painting. Sometimes the acrylic painting will have some tiny parts like the ones you just saw. It's important that these are not part of, of the background. The background, see, like this, you have to take it out. It's important that it is small, that it's beautiful, um, that your ball is fully covered. And just as a reminder, you can find this easily, this surface very easily on Amazon. So I'm painting the last bit of parts of the ball and I'm just gonna let it rest for two minutes leave it like this or place some brushes aside so it doesn't roll over 
Let's start the first part. The good thing about the sphere of a globe is that you actually don't know to find the center because the center is whenever you want. So I'm gonna be using, uh, it's like a mineral color, it's not that whitey. And with the back part of a pencil, um, I just checked also the consistency of the painting it's not too liquid, it's not too thick. And then I'm going to make, um, set the, the pencil very, really vertical. And I'm going to be pressing little by little. See? Till I have my perfect center dot. It has to be rounded. It has to look like an Eminem dot. The painting has to be really in a good consistency so that you don't have that big going after. It has to be real smooth. And from here, we're going to start expanding our mandala. So we're gonna work on some shading. I am using dotting tools. I'm going to be using the uh, the yellow one. Uh, it has two ends. I'm going to be using the super small one. And if you don't have dotting tools, you can use a toothpick. So I'm going to pick every time, very tiny little paint. And I'm just going to make a tiny dot. And this dot is going to be, um, I'm going to make like north, south, because I need to make sure I have uh, pair numbers. Then uh, east and west. And what is important here is that the distance between every two dots is the same. So I'm going to make another dot right in the middle of these two uh, dots and this is just an exercise of observation and then uh, right in front in the middle of these two right in front I'm gonna make one dot maybe this is and then right in the middle of these two dots another dot And in front of it, another dot. Let me find the most comfortable way to do this. Uh, so uh, now I'm going to just adjust some dots that I think are smaller than the others or bigger than the others. Just by putting some extra painting. And look at how it looks. Right in the middle, I think I have space for two dots. So I'm gonna make two dots in every space. Two dots. Two dots and so on. Then look how I move the ball with the hand. It's also important, well, I'm not doing it now, but to clean the tool so paint does not accumulate in the end of the tool and you end up having bigger dot than you expected. So this is the first line. Uh, oops, sorry. Um, these two are a little bit too close than others and I'm just counting here just to make sure I have pair numbers why so? because I'm going to be working 
on a sea urchin and I need to have prayer numbers, preferably pair numbers. If you have enough even numbers, it's okay, but it's a different strategy than what we're going to be doing now. So now we're going to start working on, on shading in the middle of, of every two dots. I'm going from this uh, clear color that it's mineral color. I'm going to uh, place the ball just like this. I don't want it to to roll over and destroy the painting. So um, what I'm going to do next is I'm from the center to I'm going to expand it from clear color to darker color. So now I'm using this this color that it's like freezy breeze or light freeze breeze. And with same tool, right in the middle of every two dots, I place a tiny dot. And they have to be together, but you have to be able to identify every single dot. Again, I've checked the painting, the consistency of the painting first. It's okay, so no need to put water. And now it's when I am really starting to make the magic happen because of the color shading that we're going to be working on. It's going to be amazing. Also, enjoy the process, paint little by little. If you made a mistake, remember, this is just painting. You can erase it and paint it again. Take your time and let's paint together. And this is the last dot for the second line. How beautiful that is. Now I'm picking another color that is turquoise. Um, what matters here is that you, you can pick any colors you like, but have three or four colors that you like from, you know, darker, medium, and, and and lighter and again in the middle of every two dots it's like a straight line see the first line the dot in the first line and on the third line are going to be aligned and then uh, in the middle of every two dots I am um, just placing this this dot I have to be careful that all of them I have to make sure they are more or less same size and again don't forget to clean your tool every now and then see they are aligned with the first line and I am using the same tool, it's the yellow one, but I am loading a little bit more, slightly more paint. So this is the third line, and I think you can still see the shading. Uh, now this is a, like a darker turquoise. Um, I think it's a color that matches. I'm going to be using the same tool, but the other end that has a bigger, bigger size of the tool. And in the middle of every two dots, 
see now it's it's like a straight line from the center it has to be aligned we have to keep observing um, that this makes sense and let's keep going let's keep painting together And now we close the fourth line. Enjoy, look how beautiful it looks from whitey to this darker turquoise. Then I am using a color that it's uh, even darker. It's like, it, it has a tendency to green. I'm gonna be using these two tools, dotting tools. Um, the big dot with the white too and the small one with the uh, yellow too. So first I'm going to make uh, some dots using uh, yeah I'm not using the other color that I showed you. I'm going to be this is like a oil blue with the look the first, the third and now the fifth uh, lines have to look like a line the even and the pair lines they're gonna be like straight lines this is more like blue I was checking the other color but I think I prefer that one it's like a darker blue oil blue and I think it looks Amazing. Now we're closing the line with the last two dots and a uh, Look how it looks. Amazing, isn't it? Um, now with the same tool, with the, with the bigger part of, of the white tool, I'm going to place a dot like this, then in the middle of these two dots, then I'm gonna skip this one and place the dots in the next. Yes, I'm skipping skipping and see the shape it's like a new shape and I can do that because I made sure at the beginning that I had pair numbers so that allows me to jump one set of two doors I jumped this one I placed place the dot on this one and as I said this is so because it's uh, we have pair numbers here. We're almost closing that round. Perfect. See? Let's let it dry a little before we start moving towards the next uh, option. Look how it looks. It's like a tiny star. So beautiful. So the idea is that each of these, um, let's say, uh, extremes that has one here and one in front, right, right in front, become legs of the sea urchin.
and you see we have pair numbers as I said before so uh, you could uh, even you know intuitively just draw a line but I'm gonna use the help of this sewing um, I don't know it's like a ruler but it's so flexible so I, I will try to set this right here in the middle see of the line before uh, the extreme dots the outer dots and I'm gonna do the same on the other side because the idea is that this line is a little bit parallel sometimes you cannot just put it right right in the middle maybe a little bit more to the left or to the right depending um, on the size of the paper I'm just gonna use some scotch right to fix it up for a little bit and well this is very intuitive people it's not there's no like a recipe book <laughs> I just made up this this way to do this I uh, gotta fix this um, but and then I'm gonna just draw a line as straight as possible from one side look it moved a little it's it's a little bit difficult to to keep it still um, but I'm gonna draw the line here you don't have to go deep down to the other side it's this is just a reference and then we're gonna keep moving this to the next couple of legs one in front of the other um, and also the idea is that these legs that we are drawing they kind of have the same um, the same distance so uh, the space is even as much as possible this is gonna require a lot of observation on, on your side um, so as I said you can either draw the line uh, just eyeball it and, and draw the line or just use these I think it's easier if I use these and then I make adjustments if uh, any line is too narrow or too uh, wide then I just erase and, and keep going I think in here what is important is to keep in mind that you don't need to be perfect that we're learning here there's a learning curve see we have we kind of have to observe these dif size differences um, so there's no huge difference between the between these legs that we're working on be patient with yourself sometimes there are people that have more difficulties handling with this um, non-flat surfaces See, in here, for example, this one is narrow, the other one is wider. Um, I think these two are pretty much similar. Um, but, well, let's keep moving on, and then we'll make adjustments as necessary. Also, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Either way, it's going to look beautiful, you will see. Um, the idea is to have a good time, to enjoy, and if you're working on this because you are professional and you uh, sell your, your pieces, that's fine. We do have to make it as best as possible for our, our customers. I think it's important also to keep in mind to have this sponge below that helps keeps support and try not to mark the lines too dark these lines are just reference we're gonna have to erase them 
So let's keep watching. These three have more or less same space. Um, I think on the other side, one of a little bit more narrow than the other, but I think it's going to look nice anyway. I think we are close to the end now. So, well, there are some spaces that are a little bit narrow and others that are wider. But let's keep it like this. Let's work on this. Um, I think it's going to be very interesting, the results. So for a first experience with an sphere, it's important that you, rea you, you deal with um, si different kind of situations. Uh, my idea is to go down from, from here to this line. We're going to go and do some shade until we go back to clear colors. Uh, we're going to start working with this oil blue color um, till the other side. Um, I'm just checking again here the the paint is, is uh, clearly it's really 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 dried. You could more or less imagine what the center on the other side would be and maybe with a coin I am using this base here um, I'm just gonna draw a circle imagining this is quite parallel to the center that I draw just to have a reference but this is I'm not gonna paint on this this is just going to be kind of a reference and I am doing this out of intuition so um, just to have an idea that this center is reflected on the other side uh, just by that and then I'm just going to give continuity to the lines uh, till I finish again I'm here using full intuition it's important that you let go clearly for example in here this is really narrow compared to to the others but I'm just gonna keep it like this let's keep moving uh, because I also want you to deal with imperfection and we're not perfect um, and let's see how it goes let it let's Let's flow. I mean, let's just let it flow and see how it goes. I am just uh, remarking some lines that I think there are way to to lights, and then I could maybe lose track when we are painting down. And well, there we go. We have measures. We have marks. I'm going to be using this dotting tool, the white one, 
on the biggest side and I'm just going to put a dot right below on each of the legs. I need to go down but I, I want to do some shading back to, to clear colors. And it's important that we try to keep these uh, dots on this second first line going down but second it would count the dot we did before same size because then one leg is gonna be a head down with respect to the others and that's not the idea right let's look at it enjoy it and i'm going to do an additional round try to observe that you need to keep same distance here um, and also same distance i mean they have to be equally wide the space because we're gonna have dots in between and also try to keep a straight line as I said we're just going down these lines we just draw So let's start shading. Now uh, let's continue with the this color that is like a dark um, turquoise. And I'm using same dotting tool by the way, the white one um, on the big side. These dotting tools they have two extremes, one that is goes from small to, to, to bigger in five different sizes and the other extreme is pretty much the same on all of them. I see one of these legs it's wider than others but still it's gonna be looking beautiful. And I love these colors, by the way. They are calming and they remind me of the, of the sea. I'm gonna go for another, uh, another line, another round with the same color. this uh, well I need to remark some of these dots just to make sure they are more or less same size well, let's keep going Almost finishing this round, enjoying the moments and how uh, concentrated we get when we paint. So now um, let's begin a third round with this color. I think the idea would be to paint three rounds with each color till we go till we get to the lighter colors 
just be careful also not to put your fingers as, as you move um, as we move the, the the sphere try not to put so the finger I'm seeing here in one of the legs that is going um, a little bit ahead so I'm just going to set the dot here and reinforce the one in the middle these are checks and it's all eyeballing it's there's no like exact and precise signs to to do this uh, it's observation mere observation and this is why painting on a sphere requires uh, patience require that you do you're not in a rush painting this let's have a look at, at the distances and the difference of the sides of the dots and also uh, trying to identify any leg that is far behind so now I'm gonna use the turquoise and I'm just going to be repeating the same uh, procedure sorry I'm gonna make one round and now it's a moment of uh, of pain really lots of attention because then we need to avoid that the globe or the sphere just rolls over so we have to keep it um, well strong firmly just like And I think it's important to mention that the tool that I am using is the same. What happens is that as we move uh, down, the globe gets wider than the, spa the spaces between um, in the middle of just the central structure will get wider too Also have a look to your tool if you need to clean it up, do so. And again, be careful uh, with the way you are holding. If your hand gets tired, just have a rest. Place it in the, you know, take advantage of the spaces that are unpainted in order to uh, move and to place your your board, your sphere on a basis where it can you know have a rest and, and the painting can dry so I'm just gonna use the sponge as you can see here be careful it has to be steady and if it isn't you can just put 
Oh, look, it's moving. <laughs> I like playing with danger. <laughs> well, I am experienced. Um, I wanted to have a look on something. Um, the way I'm holding the ball, because I, I do have experience. If it is your first ball, maybe it's important that you let it try a little before you move much more down. There is something really important about the consistency of the paint, sorry. <laughs> um, the paint that I am using, it's a little bit thick, thicker than normally. Uh, why is that? Because, uh, for example, if you're using the paintings from the tubes, um, try not to make it very liquid because then it's gonna roll when you are painting a sphere on our globe thicker painting is a friend not super thick but look at this do not use very liquid painting because it's not gonna be beautiful it's going to be give you trouble so it's important to, to keep that in mind so now I'm gonna give it a rest I'm just going to set it here and be careful well it rolled oh no but nothing happened to the painting so I'm just I think I'm just going to use one dot in two to keep it steady and let's go to the next step. So to choose color, complementary colors to this, I just paint it on a cartoline or a paper. Same thing that I did uh, on my sphere again it rolled <laughs> oh boy well, just gonna um, it's dried so <laughs> no problem um, so uh, my idea is to select to use every leg here in the middle with different types of options of colors just to see how they combine and the idea is to use colors that we normally do, colors that normally we don't use. Uh, just to see, it, this is like an experiment, a chart of colors, just to, to see what goes well with these colors. So I want first to start, this is a metallized, a metallic color, white like pearl. And what about just putting inside in the middle just white pearl color to see how it looks like. And of course, how I feel. This is the moment in which we connect with what we want uh, without judging. It doesn't have to be perfect because now it doesn't have to be right in the middle because now I'm just testing colors. See, um, this color, um, I think I like it. I think I like it. It's pretty wide, the leg, the space in the middle compared to others. But as I said, I'm not looking for perfection here. I'm looking for uh, colors. And this is where I start to get connected uh, with my inner self. So now I think I'm going to use three metallic colors. One is the pearl color that we just used. Then um, another color that is a grayish and the black metallic color. This is the first one. Uh, of course, we can always 
can go from dark to darker to to lighter but I am starting in the middle with lighter colors because the leg of the sea urchin starts uh, to in the center closer to the center with a darker color so it's nice to have that combination of dark and in the middle with a lighter color so again I'm not looking here for that imperfection it's just a chart of colors so we're allowed to make mistakes in terms of distances um, see this space here um, this is what I am telling you it's darker so it's important to have uh, bright colors in the middle to enhance these visual effects so all the colors that I am going to use here are going to be clear now I am using like a very light uh, green I'm going to be going from darker to lighter then um, let's see I can use another green that is a little bit it's light it's still light but it's darker than the previous one and this process is nice because um, I mean these charts of colors are never wasted you can keep um, you can keep them see I have a third color that is a little bit darker and well that's the idea and then I am using like an apple I'm using four different colors in here there's no rules you make your own rules you're choosing colors so feel free to to try with you know unheard of colors colors you've never painted neon colors whatever you want this is the moment to try now I think I'm going to go with same tones but with metal colors I'm going to start I think with same turquoise light a very light turquoise but it's a metallic color I think it would be interesting if we kept a ball all turquoise turquoise sorry um, and then I have another color that is a little bit darker but it's also metallic as you can see here and then this is a little bit more bluish but again we're just it's it's lighter but again just trying I think this is a nice exercise um, you can keep the track of different palettes and just just by doing this you know in the future you can compare for other arts now I'm going to be using just this blue color that is also metallic it's actually it's blue metallic blue it would keep the ball a little bit monochromatic but again it would be interesting um, and it also depends on the purpose there are people who really do love blue then you keep it bluish or if you want 
different contrasts of colors um, and you can use this uh, well I'm just re-explaining here uh, all the legs that I've used um, these colors uh, are just amazing I love them and I'm also going to be trying other combinations, maybe a little bit more outrageous. Because this is the purpose of these charts. To get us completely out of the box. If you haven't tried it, I do recommend that you do. So I'm going to take these colors that are also metallic but they are more copper colors not a regular combination that I would use for painting but I want to see how it looks like so first I'm just see I'm not using dotting tools I'm just using the back part of, of a Posca pen and then I want to do another you same color but with the shading I think it would be nice then I think I'm going to make a combination of several Cooper uh, tones that I have here also I think it's important you don't have to have the exact paints that I, that I am using. You can have, you can test your own. I just want to show you here the process. Um, the process. And I think it's going to be equally beautiful. Despite the brand of your painting and if it's tube, if you have to um, you know, make it um, a little bit la uh, you know more and more th thicker or if you wanna make it more liquid um, well now uh, let's continue moving on with other crazy color combinations to see how we feel now I'm gonna use um, I don't know I am I, um, in a mood for these colors that are metallic and they are a little bit more like the desert um, brownie colors I think they go very well with with turquoise and then I'm going to go explore golden colors how would it look like so I have a wide range of, of or golden gold colors here <laughs> I'm just gonna use them to see how they would look like I have a very light one I have a mid um, a mid that, that it's it's still gold but it, they're not that dark so gold there are plenty types of gold you can buy in the markets or you can make your own mixtures with Cooper colors and have a look at what colors you get. You can always blend new colors, create your own colors. Now I'm gonna try, I think with um, another, the other leg, mm with gold um, well I'm mixing up here gold and uh, some gold colors and copper colors now these are like brown metallic browns that I love I have to uh, metallic colors they have a different consistency 
in paints see um, and look I'm, I'm just in here I'm really testing and <laughs> I'm showing you the process sometimes it takes a little bit longer to get um, the color the bottles so I have also a wide range of brown <laughs> metallic brown colors and this is another try another try um, now I have another another uh, range of metallic colors that are more pinky uh, they they would go from pink to red and I want to try that too see it's um, they have well these paint makers have the most exotic names for all these paintings um, and well, I, I don't know if you have the patience to, to look at all these <laughs> tests that I am doing. But in the end, in a nutshell, what I want to show you is that um, you know, you can try anything. And it's never going to look ugly. I mean, I think all the colors um, all the colors they combine perfectly, they go well. Uh, what matters here is that you try, you know, take up your paintings, mix up, blend colors, try everything. That I think that's my message here. Well, now I am trying a very, very light, um, very, very light, um, color it's it's like uh, lila violet very very like baby violet for babies um, and now I'm going to take these colors that are like uh, more it's they're pinker but they have a tendency it's not like a chewing gum uh, pink colors these are colors that have a tendency to go to magenta and also to to violet that I like very much I, I left them for last because I I really like them and and I made up they go to wine in this case I'm, I'm going to to wine okay see um, these colors, uh, you know, in I just repeated what we had, the legs, the center, and they have a powerful uh, turquoise in general, has a powerful, powerful vibration to me. And, and in here, what I'm telling you is I'm, I'm trying, you know, uh, everything, every possible combination, and I think when you're doing this process what matters uh, is how you feel check what it's inside you check the vibration each color has a different energy see this is what I'm telling you from you know um, all these lila color lila color violet colors to bluish, to green, to these brown colors. Try everything. I should. I'm showing here with all the patients step by step because I just wanted to be inside the creative process and and to let you know uh, that are endless possibilities, endless combinations. Everything's nice. Everything's cool. Um, Look at these colors, darker colors, lighter colors, darker colors, more, uh, you know, um, you get monochromatic options, 
Try everything. Don't be, in, be scared. Try everything and enjoy the process. So, um, you know, after uh, just in a, you know, not just adding, I like this uh, pearl color. I think it's beautiful. And also I feel appealing about this blue um, because I also wanted to, to think about, you know, the, the blue color. But then I am thinking maybe I'm going to be using for of this set of, of these sets, I, I want to see how it would look like with center dots. So I just make a smaller dots right in the middle of these um, dots and I'm just gonna let it dry. Just to see how it would look like, not to leave it at whitish. And then we can do the opposite, completely the opposite, on the blue, the metallic blue line. What about taking the pearl color and making center dots that it would look like a Greek eye? I think it's interesting. Again, I'm trying everything. Look, it looks like a Greek eye. The paint, it's a little bit dry, but again, as I said, it's um, what matters here is just a test of colors. For example, in these two that I am also doing just one color, uh, let me just reinforce here are these dots. Um, it's also nice to have shadings. For example, these two colors that are just one color, I can apply, for example, these tones um, on each of these. I think I'm going to work these, these colors on these uh, dots. And I think it's going to look very, very, very nice. And also I can, um, so I'm going to start, this, these are, as I said, like uh, the basis is a very light cooper. Then I am using a darker, I think it's better to use this side of the, the, the dotting tool. Um, because the dot is bigger. So I'm using a darker Cooper and I have another even darker Cooper that I can apply as a third um, layer. I can leave these, these guys like this or I can just put another dot in the middle. You know, that depends on the taste of the person. And then I think what I'm going to do is that I, to these lights, uh, it's like violet or light uh, color, plum, light plum, I would say. I'm going to make a shading. So um, I'm going to use this pink, like an orchid pink, to make a dot on all these dots. See, I'm using the other side of the dotting tool for the bigger dots. And let's let it dry a little. So, um, in a nutshell, for those colors that I am using, those legs in which I am using different colors, I'm leaving it like this. Uh, for legs in which I am using monochromatic, then I am including an additional layer of painting, like this. Um, so I want a third layer of, of, of dots. Um, I'm going to pick this pink tool 
and I'm just gonna make a really tiny blue metal metallic blue dots in the middle so this is officially the gray kind and now I'm taking the pearl or metallic blue here to make the same same thing here and it's gonna look beautiful I'm taking uh, the small part of the white the small extreme and I'm making big some dots in the middle it's another way to do the Greek eye all right so now um, I think I've finished with these two with these two guys now I think I'm going just to use these same colors in here as I said before the darker the I'm going from the lighter uh, on the basis to the darker color um, okay this is like a plum color I took this, these colors from, from a dahlia flower and then well, I love them, I haven't stopped painting it with, with this um, absolutely beautiful and then let's go uh, these colors, applying this with the Cooper colors Okay. And um, well, I'm taking this the third option of Cooper that I have and making a small dots right in the middle. and it's gonna last but not least I'm gonna use a fourth color maybe or I can just leave it like this um, and let's keep working on, on this I can still make a super teeny tiny dot here blue metallized blue just in the tip of the dots so I have four layers look at all you can do just to check colors and I'm gonna do the same for the for the Greek eyes that have the blue metallic blue as bases and I have I'm done with um, with these layers here and now I'm going to be working on uh, a couple of more legs for example I'm gonna go straight with a teeny tiny plum color dark plum color on top of these dots as decoration and then for the Cooper leg also I'm gonna take the darkest Cooper that I have just to have a small detail here on top of, of the dots wow I sorry I dripped a little bit but again this is not about perfection it's about um, I think I'm gonna use the smaller part Okay, and then tiny, see, teeny, teeny, tiny um, dots. And, well, 
Let me clean my table. And well, in summary, this is how you build up a chart to visualize. I mean, this is a way to put in out of the head things, uh, the colors, and then you can analyze different things, different colors, different tones. You can understand how you feel inside and which of these colors are appealing to you at the moment. And you also can keep this for your records and you can take it out in other occasions in which you need to um, choose colors. Well, looking at these charts and analyzing, I think I'm going to go um, with these tons of colors to paint the rest of the mandala. Um, I think I feel more like these colors that I got from the mandala. I like these too, but uh, instead of green, I'm feeling more like these colors, like the chakra sahasrara. Um, or the crown chakra. I think it's more appealing. So let's get our hands to work. Well, now it's time to get to work. We find the dotting tool that fixes better inside this space because we're gonna start placing dots so um, I'm also going to start working on shading um, with the colors that we saw this is a really uh, I was talking about a light violet but it's really like baby pink or so and I use him this tool the second I, I normally mention it like a second uh, set of tools because these are the big ones the small uh, extreme and then right inside right in the middle I'm using this pink color that is really light and it makes a lovely contrast with the oil blue as you can see here um, we are also going to go down these aisles um, working on shading and I hope you're enjoying as much as I am this process of painting it's absolutely amazing it's simply amazing I think it is Take your time, remember um, that the painting, the consistency of the painting cannot be too liquid. It's important that actually the tendency of the consistency of the painting is to be thicker. And this is pretty important because we're working on a non-flat surface. Keep this in mind. It's absolutely important for the ending results of, of your work. As we move down, as you can see, uh, in here, I'm counting that more or less we need five more dots. So I, I think I'm going to mix up these two colors. I'm going to blend them to get another color here to have a great shading I have four colors here I might need more so uh, let's start mixing up a little bit of just a little bit of the darker pink color And I'm going to add some light pink. 
as you can see here. In terms of proportions, I would say that it is 40% light pink and 60% darker pink. What matters is that in the end you can see the difference between the, the light pink and this color. I think it's pretty important. See, it cannot be as dark as the dark pink color, but it also cannot be as light as the light pink. It has to be somewhere right in the middle, more or less in the middle. Mix up very well, blend as much as possible so you get a smooth mixture of colors. So the second, I'm, I'm using the same tool but the bigger ball. And right below the previous dots, we're going to be placing a bigger dot that is darker. So the legs are moving from dark color to light color and these aisles are going to be moving in the opposite direction from, from light color to dark color and it's going to be a nice con contrast of colors. Wow, I love it. I do love it. I'm just going to let it dry a little. Um, now I cannot afford it roll it, all, roll it over and destroying the painting. Um, and what I'm going to do next is to clean my tools. I'm going to save that painting. And now next step. I'm going with same tool, same um, same ball size, but I'm going with the darker pink, and I'm gonna make the third ball right in here. Again, check up the consistency of your paint. It definitely, if this is the second color here, it cannot be liquid. If it's liquid, uh, it will roll. It the painting will will run, and it's not gonna be nice. It has to be a little bit thick. 
think a little bit about it observe how the paint goes I'm just gonna leave it like this a little bit till it dries and then I will come back painting the rest alright so um, this is the chart just as a reminder um, I started uh, working um, with these colors that go from uh, dark, the light pink to the plum color or Bordeaux color. Um, remember to keep these in your records. It's important to keep these charts because sometimes we paint from one day to another or we leave it resting the piece or in the pile of work to do and we forget about it. so keep it near um, well this is fully dry then I'm going to continue painting the other legs maybe three more dots and leave it to rest if necessary um, I think I can move forward Picking up more painting. Um, well, I am observing how the painting is performing if it's running on one side I must stop but I think I can just finish let it dry I think it's better time to let it dry and then um, we continue with the next steps Well, we've finished with this third color. Look at this. And well, let's let it have a rest. And then we move forward to painting. Now um, we're going to the third color, but we still have space here. We, sorry, we have space here. So I think I'm gonna make another blend of colors. I'm picking this uh, darker, the third color that I used. And then I'm going to mix up um, with this color that is a plum color. It's like a plum. Again, important the consistency 
of the pin. Uh, well, I'm gonna make because darker colors, even if you use a little, they they darken the colors very much. So it's like 40% or 30% plum and 70% the dark pink. We mix up very well again. I think I'm gonna darken it a little bit more. No, I'm gonna make it lighter. <laughs> I think it went a little bit too dark. Let's keep it down. Remember the importance is that these mid, um, these blendings are gonna be, it's going they have to be colors like that are right in the middle of the tones that you used previously and the ones that we're gonna use next. I'm using this back part of, of a marker and to make sure I have a successful dot, <laughs> see it's a straight line, I am being generous at loading painting, see it has to be bigger dots and also I'm not pressing right away, I'm pressing little by little, see, so I get it a perfect round. I think it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. And um, well, let's see because we have to do this to all the legs, and I have we have to make sure it's not. Um, gonna run the paint isn't going to run so again we have to be checking the behavior of the dots and I think I can risk to paint a fourth um, dot here I think he painted it a little bit too close to the previous. I'm gonna let it dry. Well, I finished already <laughs> the fourth round. I painted uh, with the mixture that we did before. I'm saying here I'm going from the from the light color to the dark color and uh, why well, I made some blending and now I'm going right away with plum color uh, okay now I'm going with the plum color and I just uh, chose the second tool biggest tool in the um, dotting tool um, but you can decide freely what is the best size of the dotting um, for a perfect dot um, and it's important to keep the straight line right in the middle as you can see and then um, well let's keep moving on I think the important thing here is the consistency of, of the painting see it doesn't run I think this is great
So now um, we can let it dry a little. We can clean our tools while we let it dry. Now uh, I've this is I think it's it's uh, we we can do something while it dries actually. I'm taking I'm extending um, a third I'm making a third uh, dots on the arms because we only made two as you can see and well, let him dry. So now what is next? Uh, I have this magenta color. I love magenta and I'm gonna make some tiny details. Then I'm getting the smallest uh, ball on the blue darting tool and I'm going to be making these tiny dots um, like you see um, you can get supports with your sponge but let's keep moving and doing these tiny dots while the last dots we did dry
for now um, I need to extend the legs a little and I pretend to make um, well this is a little bit sticky sorry <laughs> it's a little bit thick so I'm taking the the super light turquoise and I'm gonna be mixing up um, with a little bit of white in order to have a lighter uh, turquoise <laughs> as you can see it's like half and half the idea is to as I said at the beginning my idea with the legs of the urchin is to go from from dark to to lighter colors and well I think I'm missing one color here so I decided to blend and then right after I make this um, mixture well smooth I'm going to continue uh, with the painting of, of the legs um, just like this and I have I don't know if you remember but I we were using the white tool with the big ball so see it's it's noticeable look from dark to to light colors Well, this is the last dot. I've made three dots in a row on each of the legs. And then, um, well, I think I only need in the aisles or in the middle between every two legs, there's just this dark plum or Bordeaux color. It's like a wine color. To be applied see uh, we've applied all this can you see we blended some and 
well it looks like I have to blend these two because it looks like I have space here for two balls so let's keep moving I'm gonna let it dry and then we start blending colors So I'm taking a little bit of plum and just a little bit of this wine color because dark colors really they make affect its bulldog color. They make quite an effect. Um, so again. Let's keep it smooth, let's blend well as much as possible. And then uh, we take a little bit maybe of Bordeaux to make it a little bit darker. It's better to go little by little, you know, not to apply the darker colors just little by little to get to the right tone. Okay, so now um, I'm comparing to the last dot that we did and I think it's um, I think it's good um, and then I have to consider um, I have to check, we, we do have to check I think it's a good color, it's darker um, than the previous set of of, of dots we did and it's not darker as dark as the bird dogs color so now I'm using the first two of the second sets with the big big ball and I'm going to be painting the whole round Okay, so now this part is dried and then I can place the bow instead of this, I can place it upside down. See, and then I need some tools to keep it uh, steady. And let's let it try. Um, I think in the meantime, since it is like this, I can, we can even start painting with the Bordeaux or wine color. I think it would be nice. 
um, since uh, we are still letting this dry and look at the way I am holding the bowl okay and I'm just gonna make the burdox uh, dots all around the legs or in between the Now with the light uh, turquoise and the blue tool with a big ball, I'm going to make right in the middle the big ball like this above all every single bulldog's um, dots and it has to be a straight line. And now with the same tool, but with the other extreme, the smaller one, I'm just going to place one tiny dot on the each side of the big dot, just to give a closure to the leg or to the middle part of the leg of the sea urchin.
now I'm making uh, with the first two of the second uh, set of tools right in the middle with plum color a big dot and well it's difficult uh, not to get dirty some parts I put a finger on one of the light turquoise ball but it's okay we're gonna fix it up very soon um, I think it's important that you keep looking at all details look at the way I move the hands look how I hold the ball see I am trying not to put the fingers above the paintings. It's difficult to do when you have reached this part, but it's not impossible. See, it's dirty in some parts. As you can see, I have to retouch this one. And don't worry, because I'm going to fix now, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna let it dry here a little so be careful again when you place your bowl uh, or your sphere on the support you have and now I'm gonna paint all this black um, it's not dried out yet but um, well I'm gonna just take black painting and very carefully see it's very careful I have to make sure that I place my fingers on the dry paint very carefully I correct these mistakes with black painting um, there's a mistake here also so you have to observe if you've placed most of the time we place wrong <laughs> the finger on the wrong side especially with the spheres and then with a very tiny and very thin um, pen um, brush you can fix this so now it's time to let it dry by all means it's almost dried are dried enough to make some details I'm taking um, the blue uh, dotting tool with the small parts I'm making just right in the middle of every two of every two dots one tiny dot it's gonna, just a detail And from this point on, it's all about creativity. You can do as you feel. 
I'm taking again uh, this this tool on the small side with the guitar class and I'm just gonna make two tiny dots. Okay, then I'm gonna have the magenta colors because I still need to do some uh, details that I started doing before, so be careful. Let's take the bowl just like this. And then I'm gonna finish these two dots in, on every leg.
And now in the middle of these plum colors, I'm just gonna apply magenta. I think it leaves a point of light that looks so beautiful on each of these dots, right in the middle. I am using the first two. See, it combines with what the details we did um, in the middle of, of the legs of the sea urchin. See? And it's, it looks beautiful. Again, you can apply the colors you like. You can repeat this mandala uh, as you like with the colors you like. I think after this tutorial, you have lots of tools you can use to play with different color combinations. Um, and well, I think uh, this is it in terms of painting. I think it's t just a matter of letting it dry. And then we're gonna clean it up um, because the, the center was really clear and I think it got a little bit there. Well, now to finish, um, we just, um, with an eraser, white eraser, we cover all the areas that maybe got a little bit dirty. We clear everything, every excess of line and graphite from pencil that could have left here. And then we can definitely um, take also um, a napkin. Um, it's important to keep in mind where you place the ball. Of course, I'm doing this after the painting is fully dried. I let it dry from one day to the other. And I think I want to tell you that I have a whole um, another tutorial here in my in my YouTube channel in which I show how I um, cover and I, I apply a protective coating to this. So um, another thing you could do um, to clear all this dirt up is to take a white napkin or a wet napkin. I'm going to let it wet and, you know, just pass it by through the whole uh, painting and it will get rid of uh, well, for example, I just got these wets and I'm just cost, just to clear it up a little. And uh, and it, it looks clean, it looks nice. Then to apply a protective coating, then you can go to my other um, tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed this process of painting and choosing color. I really loved um, this process, the whole process here with you sharing. Uh, please do follow, subscribe to my channel, uh, follow me on Instagram, send YouTube, uh, send me messages. I'm here to help and to share my knowledge with you. Uh, pretty soon I will be launching my, my master class in English in which I will be teaching much more things. I hope you have enjoyed. Thanks for watching and see you soon in the next tutorial.